Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your October 2021 New Moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bulls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will Aquarius be affected by the October 2021 new moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides. This one right here, okay, there we go. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have judgment, that makes sense. And we have the sun, which is the happiest card in the whole entire deck. So that's really quite beautiful. We're rising out of darkness and into happiness. We have the eight of earth, the eight of pentacles, hard work, diligence, the four of, of wands, which is this sense of, of happiness and contentment. This is the minor arcana marriage card. So there's a commitment to something that's coming forward. The eight of wands, the repeat of the number eight. We are going to take this time very seriously with the planetary alignment. There is absolutely good reason why, but there's also a sense towards seriousness, towards a like lack of I don't want to say lack of joy, but there is a sense of lack of joy. So just be mindful of that. We then have the Page of Wands, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. There's a huge Mars component during this time. So we have to be mindful of how much that impacts us and how short our tempers are. As an Aquarius, we don't like to have hot tempers. We don't. We like to keep things really calm and, and steady and stable. This is not the moon for that. So do be mindful. Then we have our public arena stuff. We have the King of Cups. And the four of pentacles so the king of cups is this beautiful energy of i live my life and i can only live my life and there's this real understanding of that but then with the four of pentacles this is my vampiric energy card this is the energy that makes us like, hold on to things and say oh my gosh i can't possibly let go because then I'll, I'll never get to where i want to be i'll never be what i want to be i'll never have what i want to have so we have to be mindful of this during this time that we have this calm energy of the king of cups and we have to embrace it and really step into that because we also have this energy of i'm going to lose out or you know somebody's going to take it from me or we just have the energy of vampiric energy of the people around us who 
who drain us. It doesn't even have to be the people around us, you know, our, you know, immediate family and friends and everything like that. It can just be the people that we're in contact with. You know, it can be people at work. It can be, you know, people from our past and the energy is still getting drained because we're still giving them validity. So do be mindful of this during this time. Now let's look at the energy that we need to be mindful of because there's a lot that we need to be mindful of here. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. All right, so we have two and both are underdeveloped fire sign energies. So this is the princess and the prince of wands, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Again, that makes sense. We're already warned within our hearts that temperance can be running high. We're drawn to the page of wands. We have the page of wands, which is the princess of wands within this deck, which is the druid craft deck. We have to be mindful of letting our tempers get the best of us. Why? Because it's going to be so easy during this time to let our tempers get the best of us or to be drawn to people who are just really hot-headed. They're hot-headed. They're going to be like, you know what? I just need this. I just need that. I just need to push this way. I just need to push that way. This is going to be a time where we're going to think force is everything. But this is underdeveloped fire sign energy. And what we have to be mindful of here is the need for action and change just for action and change. And we'll see that when we talk about Mars Quincus Uranus. So let's look at, oh no, let's look at our chakra energy before we dive into the planetary alignment, the astrology of it all. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Ooh, this one. Okay. Love, the heart chakra. We need to embrace love. We need to embrace what we love, how we love, and how to let love forward in our lives. Letting the heart chakra shine through is going to be everything for us, and it's going to be so powerful. Now, at our root here, we have, no, <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. My goodness. And that's going to be what this time is like for us. We're going to find that we get caught up in one thing and then another, and we have our focus here, we have our focus there. That can feel really just it's a lot. It's a lot. So we have to make sure that we stay focused. We know what we're going to do next. We know what we want to bring to the table and we are well prepared for things. So just bringing that little nugget of wisdom forward during this time will be very helpful to us. Now, the best thing about this new moon is that it's in Libra. Libra here, it says, a new romantic cycle begins. It's an opening of the heart. It's an opening up of what we love. It brings in balance. It brings in harmony. There's a strong sense of partnership. I mean, there's real beauty here. This is also the first new moon of fall or of spring, depending on where you are in the world. And what we're going to see here is that there's this element of change. You know, there's this, there's a sense of depending on this moon to bring us forward somehow, some way. Now, the sun, the moon, Mercury, and Mars are all clustered around Libra at this time. This offers us empowered energy, also intense energy, but we have to be mindful of this. You know, a new moon brings the end of one 28-day cycle and the beginning of another. It brings this element of change, this burst of energy, this initiative, you know, the sense of taking initiative towards things, this using this as a time to start or finish whatever it is that we're working on or whatever it is that we desire to really kickstart us forward. But this moon brings caution. The new moon is going to be conjunct Mars. It is so important for us to make sure that we are are raising our energy vibration, that we are coming to this moon as aware as humanly possible, either to the fact that there's chaos around us, that we have been feeling off, to the fact that we need to raise our energy vibration and come to these things as positive as possible, because this combo gives us powerful energy, it gives us courage, it gives us initiative, but again, it gives us also this craziness. So we have to recognize this and respect this crazy energy that can have devastating consequences. We are going to be hot-headed during this time. We're hot-headed. Other people are hot-headed and we're going to be a bit cruel. It's going to be easier for us, for everybody during this time to do the nasty thing instead of the right thing. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Also, that's not what our world needs, right? So this powerful, this powerfully charged energy brings us irritation and it brings us aggression. The best thing to do during this time is to step back and to say, you know what? I'm not getting, I'm not getting caught up in this. Now, yes, our tempers can be short. Yes, we can be irritated during this time. Yes, our family and our friends will be well aware of it. Believe me. 
But if we step back, if we sip chamomile tea, if we, you know, embrace homeopathy or, you know, calms or rescue remedy, which are these brands that help you calm down and stay centered. I have no affiliation to them, but I've used them for years and they really do help kind of just alleviate stress. <laughs> and that's what we need during this time. This alleviation of stress, the sense of calm and centered. Now, we can try to self-medicate through through alcohol, through, you know, smoking. We have to be very mindful of overindulging and the fact that those things though they could normally calm, calm us down, can start to bring up more irritation within us. So again, be mindful and respectful of that. The new moon is Quincus Uranus. This combo doesn't help us calm down. It actually brings nervousness, tension, and anxiety. There we go. We feel like there's change that we cannot stop coming at us. We, we can't stop it and we have it here at our heart. We feel it at an emotional, almost a visceral level that we can't stop this change and that we're being pushed forward, maybe in a direction that we don't feel necessarily comfortable with, but in a direction that we have to, you know, look at and say, okay, what is this change? Why is this change? How am I moving forward? What do I need? What do I desire? We have to make sure that we relax, that we take time for self-care and relaxation. Don't rush into anything, period, and a discussion. Mars Quincus Uranus, again, doesn't help with the nervous, anxious energy around us. It actually kind of adds to it. We can find ourselves losing our patience, losing our tempers. We can find ourselves needing to act, whether it's right, whether it's wrong. We can see that in the energy that we need to be mindful of. It's energy of action. It's energy of fire. It's energy of consumption. And again, whether it's right or wrong, we're going to be like, well, at least I acted. At least I did something. This also brings very rebellious energy for the sake of rebelling, like not for the sake of rebelling against anything that we need to be rebelling against or that we want to be rebelling against. Now, this is going to be something where if we are rebellious people, it's going to make us feel like we're 16 again. You know, just that type of, you know, nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to push forward, you know, to hell with everyone type of energy. If we are not rebellious people, all right, this can be very disturbing. It just can be very disturbing because we're looking at things and we're going to feel angry. We're going to feel frustrated. We're going to feel like we have to just kind of like throw the baby out with the bathwater and and have a change, like have something happen. We're going to want to rebel against everything that we've been building, everything that we've been working towards. There can almost be a sense of, well, who cares if it burns? Everything's burning every anyway. And we have to we have to really be mindful of this because this energy can be very corruptive and very harmful to our long-term goals. So again, be mindful of that. The new moon and Mars are aligned with the constellation of Carvus the Crow. Now, even the stars do not help us here, which is super frustrating. Carvus the Crow, the best thing that we can say about Carvus the Crow is that Carvus brings this, you know, ingenuity, this think outside the box energy and this passion. But that's it. Those are the only two good traits. Well, we, well, three good tra traits. What we have coming from Carvis the Crow is also greed, dishonesty, vengefulness, spitefulness, selfishness, aggression towards ourself, towards others. So this isn't even a time where we kind of help ourselves out. This is a time where we can be sabotaging to ourselves and we can be sabotaging to others. So again, be mindful of this. The fixed star Al Gorba, okay, is located within the constellation of Carvis the Crow and it brings a kill or be killed attitude. And so we have to watch out for backstabbers. We have to watch out for, again, that energy of just, I'm not going to get what I need to get. Things are going to fall apart. And we have to be mindful of the intensity of this, of the way that we're dealing with this energy, of the way that we're dealing with this time. Now, at our root, we have judgment. We have ourselves in the fires, which is what this time is, right? We're in the fires. We're in this intensity. We're in this chaos. We're in all of this. And what we have to be aware of is that we're rising out of darkness. This is a time where we're surrounded by anger and chaos and hurts and fears. And it's almost like we're being forged. It's almost like we're walking through the, we're walking through these fires, these purifying fires, because that's what they're going to wind up being for us. We're walking through these purifying fi fires. And as we take in the heat, as we take in the intensity, all the toxicity is coming out of us. All this vengefulness, all this anger, but it's also highlighting the things within our lives that maybe we're just not happy with. Maybe it is time for a change. Maybe we are to be moving forward in a different direction, in a powerful direction, in a new way. And this is highlighting it for us. What we have to make sure is that we use this energy constructively to rise out of the box, rise out of the prison, maybe even that we've put ourselves in or that society has put ourselves in or that we think I can only be good for this or I can only do this, not that. And we have to embrace then the power and the intensity 
that is us as we rise as we rise out of darkness and it brings us to the sun it brings us to happiness to joy to success to prosperity the sun is the energy that that purifies right it's the energy that takes away so much and during a new moon the moon is not reflecting the energy of the sun so during this time we we have this light this passion shining within us we have joy and happiness people are going to want to take it from us because we shine with it and they do not we know we are having this sense of a power of insight of understanding and they are not and so this is a time where Aquarius do be mindful of backstabbers do be mindful of people taking you by eyes and saying why do you get to be successful and I don't why do you get to be powerful and I'm not you know why do you get to be happy and I'm miserable well happiness that's what we create have you ever noticed that you can have these people who have everything just absolutely everything and they're miserable absolutely positively miserable and then you have another person who doesn't have that much, but they're happy and they're contented and they bless, you know, what they have and they bless those around them. That's extraordinary. And sometimes more does not equal better. And we also, we make our happiness. Happiness, you know, people say happiness is a choice. And sometimes I want to roll my eyes at that because sometimes everything around us makes happiness so hard or even just our own chemical imbalances can make happiness so hard. It's not just simply a choice to be happy, but starting to pick out the good things in our lives, starting to focus on our blessings and not our curses, that's leading us towards happiness. And that's a very powerful thing. And starting to make an attitude of gratitude, part of our lives, part of ourselves, part of what we desire. Well, that's extraordinary. And it moves us to the eight of earth. It moves us to embracing what we've been working on, what we've been working towards. Now, this could be career-wise. This could be personally. This could be wherever it is that it is. We start to see ourselves being prosperous. We start to see our hard work paying off. We start to see passion and determination and focus and insight and ideas guiding us. Now, this is a time where other people will see this too. So again, people will take us by eyes that kill or be killed. Mentality comes into play during this time rather profoundly. If we are sensitive or even if we're not, just because of the intensity of it, this can last two weeks after the new moon, the power of this energy that we have. So being mindful of it is going to be super beneficial. This could also last for those of us who are sensitive two weeks before the full moon. So this could have just been a roller coaster ride. Here with the eight of of pentacles we need to look at the seeds that we're planting we need to look at what we're growing what we're developing why you know how we're pushing our passion forward it leads us to the floor of fire it leads us to passion it leads us to play it leads us to standing by divinity it leads us to choosing a path and embracing and knowing that we can choose a different path whenever we desire but embracing what we love what we want you know where we stand and what we need to be as we embrace this as we embrace our passion and our and our love for our lives, we start to see what we are committed to, not who we are committed to, but what we are committed to within our lives. So often we can tend to think, especially if we are, you know, empathic people, sacrificing people, you know, loving people, we can tend to think, oh, my whole life is about sacrificing for this person, for this person that I love, for that person that I love, you know, I will give up everything. And we have to learn sometimes to just be a little bit more selfish to just be a little bit more, what do I love? What do I need? What do I desire? Where do I need to be? And then we start to see the change coming in. We are seeing this change coming in as we are choosing our heart and our passion and our love and our desire above other things. Now, it's not ignoring our responsibilities. Of course, I am a firm believer of our responsibilities and of holding these responsibilities. What it is doing is saying that I am not ruled by other people that I make these choices, I honor these choices, and I honor my path forward. Again, there is something that's coming here that we're going to feel like this is a change. Now, this is actually the moon, Queen Cus Uranus, that brings us forward, that this change feels like I can't ignore it. I feel like I can't, you know, deny it or stop it. And so this change pushes us forward. This change pushes us forward to being a student of our passion, to taking in the messages from spirit that are being given now they're being given rather aggressively but just because they come in a package that maybe we don't necessarily like doesn't mean that we should completely ignore it what's happening here is we're seeing the things that we are discontented with sometimes a little bit more intensely than we want to see them all right so we have to be mindful and respectful of that energy that's coming towards us but we also have to be mindful and respectful of is the power and the passion and the purpose that we have this sense of 
you know, I'm moving towards what I need and where I need to be. We are becoming students of the energy that we need to embrace and what we what we desire. We're becoming students of our our own fire, our own intensity, what we love and what we don't want, what we need and what we don't need. Even during this time, bad habits are going to be brought up, you know, things that are just perpetuating this frustration. And we're going to be like, why am I still doing this? You know, why is this still something that I'm struggling with? It moves us to the King of Cups. In the public arena, it is our heart. It is our heart that leads us forward. It is knowing that I am only in control of me. I cannot rule and I don't want to rule anybody else. As I embrace my heart, as I embrace my passion, as I embrace what I desire, I start to embrace joy. I start to see myself moving forward in a very real and very positive way. This is going to be a time where it's intrinsically important for us to say, I only rule one person and that's me. And so I rule with love, compassion, fire, and determination of my heart, of my soul, and of what I'm developing. We have the vampiric energy coming in, which is going to want to, you know, knock us for a loop and take away the sense of understanding, the sense of well-being, the sense of self being important. And so here with the four of pentacles, we need to realize that things are intense at times. We need to realize that there is vampiric energy, people who leech off us off of us, ideas that drain us down, that bring us down, that are just out in the media, in the world to to make us angry, to to manipulate our emotions so that we will make them more money, so that we'll click through, so that we'll read the article, so that we'll do whatever it is that they want us to do in order to stay upset, in order to stay in this place of chaos. Now, that sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's actually proven and it's actually true. So here, there is the sense of what is it that is being this vampire, that is stealing my joy, that is bringing me into chaos, and why is it? You know, and as we start to see this, as we start to say this, as we start to realize this, it's like, okay, what do I need to walk away from in order to rule my life? in a powerful and loving way. It brings us to the moon. So let's see what the moon has to say for ourselves. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Oh, goodness. <laughs> there we go. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Oh, goodness. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels. So at our root, we have self-love, which is so important. Adjustments are required. Yes, self-love will bring the fact that adjustments are required during this time to let this love shine through, to make us feel harmonious within our souls, within ourselves, within what we desire, within the way that we're moving forward. It then brings us to resolution. We, realization, we are the key. You know, we are, we are the person walking through that keyhole. We are the key. And that's what we're coming to the realization of. And it's time to work through our fears. It's time to work through the chaos and the negativity and the hurt and the pain that has held us back, that has kept us quiet, that hasn't elevated us the way that we need to be elevated. We have us blossoming here at our heart because confidence is the key to success. Blossoming into ourselves, into what we desire, into what we want, into what we long for. We then have resistance. We're resisting the energy that's trying to crush us, right? Conclusions are within reach. We're going to be able to really see that the answers to our questions are within reach. Our power, our insight, our ideas are within reach. And that's going to be that's going to be a beautiful thing during this time. That's just a beautiful thing in general. To know that we are resilient to the energy that's trying to take away so much from us. And we find ourselves growing and we find ourselves becoming and we find ourselves embracing. Now our subconscious Luna message begins with nothing is yet set in stone. Focus. Nothing is yet set in stone. So focus, 
focus on what you want, focus on what we're bringing forward, focus on our transformation, our desires, ourselves, our souls, our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the Prince of Pentacles, is the fact that people will lie about money, especially during this time. They will lie about anything they see as power. And so here, this is going to be a time where we have to be mindful of this. We have to be mindful of the illusions and delusions of others, but also the illusions and delusions of ourselves. Our subconscious chakra energy is universal light. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. This is letting our light shine through. This is knowing that we are connected to something bigger, something better than we had thought. And to let our life, ourselves, our, our light of being the sun that's at our root shine powerfully and beautifully within us. Our subconscious rooted self is the mage. The mage here is knowing that we stand before the altar of our existence, that we bring our elemental power to the table, meaning we bring our connection to the earth, we bring our voice, we bring our love, we bring our fire, our passion, our determination forward. And as we claim this, as we stand before the altar of our existence and say, as above, so below, as I believe it, so I become, we claim ourselves more and more and more. And this is a time where we need to stand up for ourselves, where we need to say what we want, what we need. This is a time where we need to embrace our own magic, our own uniqueness, and not think that it's a bad thing because we don't fit in with everybody else. Our subconscious inner self is the 10 of water. The 10 of water is and they all live happily ever after. It is blessings, it is harmony, it is realizing our own happiness. And why Spirit says, you know, our own happiness is because what makes me happy might not make you happy. You might think it's absolutely terrible. And yet we use happiness as this, you know, fits one catchphrase, you know. So we have to embrace the fact that happiness is different for each and every one of us. That what brings us joy is needs to be in alignment with our hearts, not with other people's expectations. And so here we embrace the Ten of Cups. We embrace harmony and love and coexistence. It brings us to our subconscious emotional self, which is the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is realizing our dreams. It's not keeping them hidden away for a better day or for another day or for another time. It's not saying, you know, one day I will. It's saying today I start. And that's going to be really powerful for us. It's also realizing what we want, what we desire, what we love, and the way that we need to move forward. You know, what is it that our heart is calling us to do and create? Our subconscious public arena self is the Five of Pentacles. Now, this says emotional withdrawal, but there's a poverty mentality that comes forward. We have the Four of Pentacles, that's vampiric energy. We have the five of pentacles and we have this poverty mentality and it's this energy drain that is making us think i don't get to have anything else you know i don't get to be more than this i don't get to embrace my prosperity i don't get to move forward in abundance i don't get to have what it is that i greatly desire and this is a time where we start to say why you know why is this negativity this hurt this pain this chaos a part of me what is it that's holding me back and why is it holding me back all right. All right, Aquarius. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this new moon. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Aquarius.
and may you have a blessed moon.